Hey, what's up guys? Eric again, and I'm going to be showing you today how to fork a repository in Git, and we're going to be using GitHub to do that. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to find the actual repository you want. Now I know the one that I'm going to be working with today is called Utask Web or uh, Microtask Web, whatever you want to call it. Um, even on the development team, we've got kind of a a difference in opinion on what we're going to call it. But all right, so I can see right here that there's one copy of this right now. This is one we haven't even started working on, so I'm just using it for uh, demo, um, for the purposes of this demo. So you can see that I've already authored some uh, three commits, and I've you know modified the index file or whatever. So the first thing you want to do is create a fork. Now you notice that the owner of this repo is not E. Carl's D, which is my username up here but the code cartel. So I'm going to go to the code cartel utask web and I'm going to fork this. So I'm going to click fork. What that's going to do is it's going to, if I have multiple user accounts that I'm logged into, uh, which in the in this case I do, I'm logged in as code cartel and I'm logged into uh, eCarlsd. The only legitimate one that it'll let me, or yeah, the only one that it'll allow me to fork to is eCarlsd. So I'll click fork to eCarlsd. What that's going to do is actually create a, uh, it's going to create a repository copy or a clone in my repo and it's basically referenced to this code cartel. So now uh, if I look at this uh, we're now under eCarlsd utask web. So now if I go back to my account I can now see that I have utask uh, web uh, in my repository. So that's actually like when I make changes to this it's not actually going to affect the repo that I forked from. So um, when we're linking this, we're going to be linking eCarlsd utask web, not uh, code cartel utask, utask web. So now, now that I've got this uh, as one of my repositories, now I can actually do uh, push and pulls and fetch. Um, so what I'm going to do first is go ahead and open up a git shell here. Now you can also use git bash or you can do it in GitHub, the, the actual Windows version of that. Um, or GitHub's uh, Windows app rather than a console app or a command line app. So uh, this is my default GitHub repository location. So if I do a DIR here, I've got uh, utask Android in there. So what I want to do now is just actually clone this repo. And oops, I need git there. So we're going to do git clone. And then the name of the repository, which I can just grab from here and paste that. So now it's going to clone this repo. It's going to fetch it and it's going to put it in a new directory. So now if I look in here, now I've got this utask web directory. So if I switch into that directory, I can see that I'm on the master branch uh, right here. It's indicating that I'm on master branch and I've got the index.html and readme.md files. So now uh, I've basically got, uh, so I think if I look at git remote, I should have origin, right? So origin's already created since that already exists in the um, when I clone or it creates it when I clone it. So it's going to set up that origin when I clone it. Uh, what I do need is I need actually a reference to the upstream. So I'm going to add a remote, and I'm going to call it upstream. And instead of this guy, I'm going to name it or I'm going to link it to the repository that I cloned or that I forked from. In this case, it's going to be the code cartels utask web. So what that's going to do now, if I type git remote, I should have two, um, two remote connections, one's origin, one's upstream. So if I ever want to fetch changes uh, that are from the original repo after I've made some changes, I can do that. All right, and so the way you would do that is by basically typing git fetch upstream. And that's going to get the master branch if I tell it to get the master branch. If I want to fetch something else, like, or if I want to merge something else, I'm going to fetch upstream. That'll get me the, that repo on the branch I'm on. And then I can merge it if I want to. So, okay, so that git fetch upstream is just what I would use to get updated code. So if the if the code cartel's version of that code was newer than mine. So I've got the repo forked. Now let's see what happens when I make a change to it. So if I go to my, well, I'll go to my GitHub account and then I'll look at this utask web. Um, there is, 
this is full because of course when I forked it it made a clone a remote clone as well so now if I change some stuff in here let's open up Windows Explorer and go in here let's take a look at this uh, index.html so I want to in this header section I'm just gonna add an h2 uh, maybe an h4 uh, and then I'll say hi here's another header element which is an h4 okay and I just want oops and I just want to demonstrate changing this so I'm going to go ahead and save that and let's take a look now let's look at git status I've got an index file in here now that's been modified so what I need to do is add this to my commit stash or my stage my commit stage so I'm going to use git add index.html or I could simply say git add dot and that would add everything um, okay so now if I do git status again everything's been added however I need to commit this so git commit minus m and the message that I want to commit with so I'm going to say uh, modified or added an h4 to index.html okay and if I type git status and you can actually see right here as you're doing this um, when master becomes green everything's good and so you can see right here there's files that have been modified and this would be if you added files or removed files here one file has been modified and it's staged so if I do git status everything's good and the only thing we notice is that my branch that I'm working on right now is one ahead it's one commit ahead of origin master now that's not upstream it's origin so uh, what I'm going to do now is just git push origin master to push my master branch up to origin and that should push my commit up there okay and it did so total yep so it's written all the objects everything's good so now if I go to my code I should see there's four commits and if I take a look at the network uh, sometimes it doesn't load alright so if I take a look at my network this was where I got it when I originally cloned it I should have shown that but this uh, commit right here was uh, the first merge that I did when I had had sort of run through this before so now what I've done is I've got one commit ahead of where I fetched and this is my new commit now if I go to code cartel and look at their network which you don't have to do this of course um, but it's monitoring me and I haven't merged it right I haven't merged it in a master but it knows since it's a fork that I have been working on this uh, this branch right here under e Carlsty. now if I send a pull request it'll merge that back in if I if the merge or if the pull yeah excuse me if the pull request is accepted all right so pretty much that's all you need to know about actually forking a repository I'll do another tutorial on a, on a pull request and I'll do that next so hope this helped and see you next time